round, if you will, is going to be questions which each candidate received ahead of time. There are questions that I understand were taken from student questions on a survey. After each candidate's had an opportunity to respond to the question that was submitted to them earlier, we will open it up for questions from the floor. You may either ask in person or submit a written question, and we will get to as many of those as we possibly can. For this next round, each candidate will have three to five minutes to answer a question which they've seen in advance. We will start with Mr. Schaefer. Mr. Schaefer? What measures would you propose to help mediate student concerns about the current economic climate, including the housing and financial crises and rising gas and commodity prices? I think that's a, a great question, and I think those issues are issues that tend to be determined at a, at a federal level, as far as the financial crisis, commodity prices, gasoline prices. But one thing that this question demonstrates to me, really, is a concern for the cost of tuition, how much it costs to attend the University of Missouri, and what the value of that degree will be in a market where federally and across the country we've got uncertainty in financial markets, commodity prices. Will that degree be, degree be worth enough? Is it worthwhile to get that degree and go into debt that you have to go into? I think those aren't just concerns of students, those are the same concerns that we all share. I share those as a parent, I share those as a lawyer, as a member of this community who works with businesses. But particularly to students, the economy is tough. When I was an undergraduate at the University of Missouri, I worked at the Blue Note. I worked there for five years as an undergraduate. I started at the door, which maybe my size doesn't look like it, but I was pretty scrappy. But you know, and then I worked uh, my way up to the bar and actually was managing the bar when we moved from the business loop uh, down, downtown. My wife was a waitress at two bars in town and she worked in the library. It wasn't easy then either. We had no money at all. We both took out student loans. Fortunately, we paid mine off. We were still paying hers off, and that was quite some time ago. She graduated uh, several years ago. So, again, I understand those concerns, but there's a lot of things we can do, and there's a lot of things that I will support to help alleviate those concerns. One thing is that one of the greatest assets, and I think everybody up here in one way or another touched on it, is the, the great asset of our intellectual property and our ingenuity at the University of Missouri. And that's what we have to leverage to make sure that we are successful, that our students are success, successful, that our degrees are worth something out in the marketplace. And there are several things that we can do to support that, that I will do. And one is support public and private partnership such as the type that, that Dr. Steve Eubanks is doing in the Department of Surgery. The Chamber of Commerce had a great presentation a couple weeks ago where Dr. Eubanks is partnering with private entities to develop new surgical items, such as ways, meshes to close uh, wounds, new robotic surgical devices. It's a fantastic partnership. It brings recognition to the university. It brings revenue for the university. The School of Agriculture, which we have a nationally recognized School of Agriculture, is doing great things in the area of biofuels with the private sector and with animal agriculture. And again, those are things that bring worldwide recognition to the University of Missouri, they bring revenue to the University of Missouri. I will support all scientific endeavors at this university, and I want to make that clear. As I said in my opening, I do support stem cell research. I think that academic decisions should be made by academics based on peer-reviewed academic standards and professional standards and not by politicians. <coughs> Second thing we can do, we need more overall funding for the university. We simply cannot have the type of funding cuts that occurred in 2003, which again was the largest cut. We need to continue the increase in funding that we've had for the last three years. And we need to increase scholarships. And we can do that in several ways. In the last several years, as Ed Robb mentioned, we've had an increase of $75,000 in scholarships. One thing that did not go through last year was the Preparing to Care initiative that Dr. Gordon Lamb, the interim president at the time, put out there. It was a wonderful initiative. It would have alleviated debt for newly minted healthcare professionals to go out into parts of our state that don't have health care to provide those services. That's the kind of program that we need, and not just in the medical field. There are other areas where we should be able to provide some relief on student debt to those who are newly minted from the university with enthusiasm, and a degree and the ability to go out and provide services to the community. Thank you very much. Is, this, is my time up? How much time do we get? 
five minutes. Yeah, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Yeah, 30 seconds. A couple of things that I, that I won't do, and I want to point this out. Number one, I won't demand that the university give me thousands and thousands of dollars in food and alcohol and sporting tickets to have access to the university. I will be accessible to the university always. I won't require prime sporting tickets so that I can look down on you from the press box. Again, those are the kind of things that we cannot allow to occur. You know, there's a theme in this election, and that is change, and there is no doubt about it that we need change. Thank you. I apologize, Mr. Schaefer. Having trouble. That's right. I don't have. A, I don't have a clock. I really have a clock. <laughs> Maybe if you held up when there's one minute left, and then the candidates could see you as well. Senator Graham, the current financial crisis has many students and their families concerned about how they can continue to fund their education. What steps would you take to ensure that college continues to be affordable and accessible in these uncertain economic times? First of all, I think there's a number of things that we can do. Uh, one is we need to get more direct state support uh, to the universities. Um, while there has been an expansion in scholarships and on its face, that sounds like a good thing, uh, what you have to understand is the money that used to go directly to increases to state universities to support these institutions, more than half of that scholarship money now goes to private colleges and universities, whether it's Lindenwood College, Washington University. That money used to go to the University of Missouri. And half of that money, more than half of that, is now going to support private colleges and universities. What we need to remember is that the Constitution requires the legislature to properly maintain the University of Missouri, period. It doesn't say anything about WashU. It doesn't say anything about Lindenwood. It doesn't say anything about uh, Franken Tech. It talks about the University of Missouri, but we're now losing some of that money. And in those scholarship programs, they're no longer need-based. And when there was an opportunity to do that last year in the House, that failed by one vote. We could have had prepared care and needs-based those scholarships, and that failed by one vote in the House. We need to go back and rethink how we're funding higher education, make sure that we support our public colleges and universities. I think we also need to make sure that the student has a vote on the Board of Curators. The Board, the board of Curators continues to raise tuition and the student doesn't have a chance to vote. This is a fundamental disagreement between my opponent and myself. I trust you to vote on the Board of Curators. 25% of America's colleges and universities have voting student curators. The University of Illinois, my alma mater, has it. UCLA, Penn State, Wisconsin. It has worked great in other states. And I think the rest of the curators will look at you more seriously when they have to depend on your vote every once in a while. But he doesn't think you should have that vote. He wants your vote on November 4th, but he doesn't want to give you a vote on the Board of Curators. And that's a fundamental difference. I think they will be less likely to support increases in tuition if you have an opportunity to serve on there. I don't know why he doesn't want you to have a vote. Maybe it's because his treasurer is a former member of the Board of Curators. Because they get in this club and they don't think that the students should have that opportunity. If you're old enough to fight and die for us in Iraq, you're old enough to vote for the president, you're old enough to vote for state senator, then you are definitely mature enough to vote on the Board of Curators and I think that can help keep tuition in control. The student also knows more about what's going on on campus and where some of the waste is. You can help keep that budget in control, which keeps your tuition from going up. And that's a fundamental difference. And the other thing we need to do is support our student loan agency in this state. Mohila has been almost wiped out. They haven't been able to make payments for three cycles on the Lewis and Clark Discovery Initiative. And I've talked with at least one student whose interest rate went up to 13%. They were warned of this credit crisis. People can't say we didn't know what was going to happen because the Liscarnon report spelled it out. No one wanted to believe it. And everything that I told people could happen on this thing has happened on this thing. I am proud to support this university, and I'm so proud to do whatever I can. And if the chancellor wants to meet with me, I'll meet with the chancellor. If the students want to meet with me, I'll meet with the students. You guys deserve an opportunity to have that vote. It's going to make a big difference in terms of your tuition rates as we go in the future. And we've got to get back to proper state support of this institution and not letting all that money get siphoned off to uh, private colleges and universities. Could you hold your applause?
applause, please, so that everyone will have a chance. Mrs. Still, what has been the impact of General Assembly member term limits 